Welcome to this week's episode of The Rutledge Perspective, and I am excited and honored and just giddy to be talking to my guest this time, who I met many years ago, um, Alexis Thompson. And she is just the epitome of grace. And I think you are going to find some incredible nuggets in this conversation with her. And so I'm going to give you as normal, a little bit of her bio, and then you'll have all of this stuff in the show notes. And we're going to dive right in because there's so much to talk about. So Alexis Thompson is a best-selling author, a keynote speaker, an executive integration coach, we'll talk about that, and a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. Her work is guided by her life's mission to create safe spaces for souls to show up. Lexi, thank you for being on the Rutledge Perspective. I'm so I'm excited, so excited Laurel. This, this is, is going to be like awesome. A pretty cool moment in time for both of us. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And I, you know, I, what I love about what you're doing is, you know, we've talked a little bit about how people move through their career and that it's a career flow and not a career path. And I distinctly remember being at the airport in Houston when I had made the decision to leave corporate and calling you on the phone and saying, well, (laughs) I'm on my way to Germany to tell them I'm out. And you were like, it's about time. (laughs) And I remember that and thinking, okay, Lexi's going to get it. (sighs) Okay. She said, it's okay. So it's going to be okay. And then as we continue to stay in touch and you doing your business and now this big thing you're doing now, tell people about what's happening now and what you're doing. Okay, so um, I had a calling all the time to create safe places for social shop. And it's mostly been through being willing and capable to enter into conversations that most people would shy away from. Mm -hmm. And through my coaching for, I guess, two decades now, um, I started to get the calling to have the experience be more integrated and have an embodiment experience as well as intellectual experience so that we could take the emotional EQ of a leader and really show them how to embody that so that it's integrated for them when they get done whatever their learning experience is. One of the frustrations, Mm -hmm. and I know you know this, in corporate America is companies and individuals spend a bazillion dollars on learning events. Yes. And then we all have have plaques on our walls and books on our shelves and very little integration of the things we've learned because the breadth and the ability, either the course didn't build it in, but more importantly, we didn't bring it home and practice it because we would just went back to doing what we've always done. And yes. so a lot of what we're building here at Ubuntu is going to be fully integrated. There, uh, there'll be online courses, but a, a fair mm-hmm. amount of year-long integrated courses. Well, you'll go through course, you'll come on site and do some work. You'll go back into your real life, figure out how to integrate it. And you'll have a cohort that you'll move it through for the whole year. So um, I tested it in 2018. I followed those people for uh, two years to make sure that the theory had a practical application and it does. So we're excited to get it launched big time this year. See, I love that because we talk about going out and doing work, right? But, But what are we doing to make sure that what we think, what the theory is actually works, right? And so you spent the time to do that. Uh, But talk a little bit more, not but, and talk a little bit more about how this Ubuntu kind of manifested because, you know, going into corporate and doing that kind of traditional training kind of stuff, but now safe places to show up and you're in Vermont, you got chickens and how is this happening? (laughs) I really don't know. I just keep saying yes more than I say no as things are showing up. So, um, the, I guess I got the calling back in like 2008. I was going mm-hmm. through a bunch of journals that I had and it was going through my gratitude practice, which was kind of a haphazard practice, but mm-hmm. relatively consistent. Um, and I was looking for threads and patterns because yeah. it's something that I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. And I realized in that I was looking for fresh air. Um, I was looking for fresh water and I was looking for mountains and I was in a suburb with Houston. Mm. And none of those things existed. <laughs> right. So I realized in 2008 that eventually I was going to have to leave Texas, but I was making great money. I worked mm-hmm. with people I loved. I was in the corporate schematic. So I had a title yeah. and, a, and all the things that made me oh, feel yeah. like I 
had made it, you know, mm-hmm. and I wasn't willing to let go of that, even though now that I had the inner voice that said, it's time to get your off ramp. And even with that, in all candor, um, I didn't get off my off ramp for another five years. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't this, you know, snap your fingers and you're there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And w- because when people meet me and I'm here, they're, they sometimes, you know, we see someone when they look like they're being in their sweet spot and they're successful, yes. but we didn't see the blood, sweat, tears, and agony that they went through to get there. Right. Yes. So I say all of that because anybody that has something that you're looking at and you're saying, mm-hmm. wow, I'd like to, or whatever, I think you need to do a gut check on how much you really want it because there's a lot of hard work behind the experience. But Mm -hmm. um, we ended up stumbling upon um, a piece of land in Vermont. We actually were thinking it was going to be out West that we were going to do it. I I grew up here. I didn't really plan on ever coming home. It was kind of a Mm -hmm. weird thing, but here I am and Mm -hmm. I'm extremely happy. And uh, so the irony of it all is we started building in 2019. Of course, we know what happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and so building a place for people to come was kind of not a great time. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I remember kind of looking up, going, oh, wow, this is funny, you know? Yeah. And I'm going, okay, I'm just going to breathe through this, breathe through this, breathe through, breathe through this, because the truth was we needed time to get it built. Yeah. Um, another truth was um, that we were really safe here in Vermont mm-hmm. compared to so many others. We have tons of yeah. green space. Um, that we could take advantage of. So mm-hmm. we've been building buildings and working with the zoning department and finding business partners. And yeah. um, we're just starting to acquire land and get buildings on the zoning permits and get it up and running. So, yeah. I just love it. And and I think one of the keys that you just said is, especially in this social media thing, you know, we see people and we're like, oh, well, they just quit and then started this business. And and I remember I even had that, right? Oh, yeah. I'm done at the end of December, 2017, March, 2018. This is going to be up and running. No big deal. Not even close, yeah. not even close. And, and there may be some people who have been starting things beforehand or, or who have mm-hmm. such an aligned piece of their business that maybe it does at least initially tick up pretty easily for them. Mm-hmm. But I think what you said is key for people to understand is, we often don't see, I think the quote was, we get upset because we're comparing our behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. Oh, that's a good one. And we don't see that trauma, right? We don't see the corporate trauma, which is real. We don't see the blood, sweat, and tears. We don't see the agony of the decision Yes. because we are kind of geared towards, oh, you got the title, you got the money, you got all of this stuff, you know, that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So mm-hmm. when you think about this move for you, and especially because listeners, I'm going to have you um, the, all the information for you on Lexi's book um, and her gratitude practice as well. But this whole idea that you have around, you know, leadership and this graceful leader and mm-hmm. your gratitude practice, and then moving to Ubuntu, talk a little bit about how all of this started kind of integrating for you and the space you made to hear that so you could take action. Yeah, that's a big, big question. So um, I, again, and, it, and I think people kind of laugh at me, but mm-hmm. once you get to know the truth of it all, it's really not funny and you go, there might be something here. Um, mm-hmm. But my gratitude practice is foundational for how I live my life. It, it mm-hmm. doesn't mean I'm perfect. It just means I'm constantly participating in the process. Um, yeah. And in that, when you are in a space of constantly mining for what's right, and even in my coaching practice, you know, I've, for so long, I use strengths finders, which is looking mm-hmm. at what's right about somebody and helping them manifest yeah. more of that, not to yes. ignore the, the gaps, but to maybe not focus on them so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that coalesced over probably eight or 10 years of my coaching practice and my own mm-hmm. personal development and beautiful things just started showing up because I started to see them when they did and honor them. And then not in an entitlement way, but I fully mm-hmm. expect my life is going to align because I keep doing alignment work. I keep doing yeah. the hard thing. You know, just the other day, I mean, I, I help leaders work in communication and conversation all the time. Mm-hmm. It's what I do. Mm-hmm. And the hard conversations. And yes. just this past weekend, this is just, this is where you learn that the student is the teacher and the teacher is yes. the student. I had been avoiding a conversation with my partner for 12 months. Yeah. And I just looked at them and said, Hey, you know what? 
I'm going to need a ton of grace. I'm really scared to do this. Mm-hmm. And you've got one shot. Like you can't <laughs> screw this up with me because I'm so scared, you know? Right. And you're like, okay. And then I said it to them and, and I was met with grace a little bit of like, what was the big deal? Right. Cause it's always yeah. so much bigger in our head. Right. That, that's kind of the, what I'm talking about, about the integrating and the aligning and the integrating and the mm-hmm. aligning and when it shows up. You don't get to stick your head in the sand anymore when you're living right. a life. You've got to do the work when it shows up at your doorstep. Mm-hmm. And I would say that's the secret sauce to how I end up, you know, with my highlight reel. Kind of, yeah. And we could argue that it really isn't a highlight reel, but we're here <laughs> still working really hard, right? <laughs> you know. And so my graduate practice foundation, all the graceful leadership piece was, you know, I've been in coaching for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, my coaching practice practice evolved from other models to kind of. Yeah. the Lexi secret sauce model on top of a mm-hmm. model. And that happens. I just think when you're master, you're mastering something, you kind of put your own yes. secret sauce in it. And so mm-hmm. that came up with the power of a graceful leader. And that's the book that I wrote It's mm-hmm. the tenants that I work with when I'm coaching. Um, and because it's underpinned with gratitude, magic happens. Mm-hmm. I don't know how else to say that. You know, I was yeah. working with a doctor before this and she's like, I don't know how this is going to work. And I'm like, you do not need to know how, I don't know how right. you do heart surgery. And you don't need to know how this works. Just exactly. do. She's like, yeah. okay. And yeah. I know clearly on the other side of that, we're going to end up where we always end up, which is in a pretty lovely place. Yeah. Um, so it all it all come mm-hmm. came together. And then mm-hmm. the other practice I hinted at earlier is that in May and October, mm-hmm. I have what I call yes months. Is that means when something shows up, if it's aligned, that's the first yeah. question. And I have the resources, time or money, or hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, I just say, yes, I do no mm. research. I don't, I don't call 10 people to see what they think. Yep. I just say yes to it. And I'd say 85% of the time it shows up way better than it ever could. 15% mm-hmm. of the time I learn a hard lesson and that's okay yes. too. Right. Yes, in, in all exactly. Of it. Um, but because of those yeses, um, I end up on a beautiful mountain in Vermont. Um, there's people that are asking to buy into the community that's up here that we didn't even expect to have happen for another six to seven years. And we're mm-hmm. already in that space that presents its whole another set right. of issues because it's so early. Oh um, yeah. But that's how you, that's witness. That's the witnessing or the feedback, biofeedback that we know we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in the world. And that's pretty yeah. special. Yeah. I, I just love that because I think sometimes we, when we talk about grace, one, we don't give ourselves enough grace (laughs) and you and I've had this conversation, right. And, and it's one of the things when I look at, I was looking back at some other podcasts and one of the things that popped up today was you need some grace in your hustle that I did. Cause we get this hustle Mm -hmm. grind, work hard, you know, and, and not so much the, the pushback that says, you know, we, you, you don't need to work hard. You know, it's not, that's not what, what I'm saying, because there are periods of time, right. When, when the grind is just a grind, if you're really trying to accomplish something. Um, and yet we put so much pressure on the fact that if something didn't happen, we didn't work hard enough. It's that judgment, right? If you didn't get it, you didn't want it bad enough. If you didn't make it happen, what was your plan? I get a lot of that. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. If you didn't make it happen, you didn't have the right plan, right? And all of that noise. Mm -hmm. And yet you've been able to really seed into this idea of not only saying yes, and I love that having two months where you actually say yes, but also some grace, some grace around the lack of perfection, right? And some grace around this may not look the way I think it's going to look, but if it's aligned, then I'm just going to go with it. And I'm going to give myself some grace to just let happen. What's going to happen. Yeah. And then sometimes it's, you know, it's the inner grace and sometimes outwardly, it doesn't look graceful at all. I can remember the one, the year that we found the property. um, I I said yes to a yoga retreat. Um, Mm. I've done yoga at that point, maybe five times, but I'm Mm -hmm. like, how hard could it be? It's yoga. (laughs) Well, right. the, 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 the yogi that came up was from New York City, and he brought an entourage of 20-something-year-olds. Oh. It was my 50th birthday. It was painful. During all the breaks, I was sleeping. I never did special <laughs> hours, but I made every class, and it didn't look good. Yeah. My poses stunk. Yeah. He had to constantly correct me, but I, should, yeah. I kept showing up inside of it, and that's the yeah. grace. I gave myself the grace to look silly, to mm-hmm. feel silly, to not 
be in good form to definitely not yeah. be 20, you know, all yes. of those things. And yeah. I think that's been a big one for me is permission to just not have to look good all the time. You oh. know, and that's not just about your hair. And that's just, like, yes. I, don't have to be a, I don't just have to be like spot on perfect all the time. Sometimes yeah. just in the learning of something new, it's, you're going to look yeah. silly or be silly or, you know. Yeah. Well, and what's so interesting about that is, you know, people want to see the mess. And I don't mean kind of the, you know, housewives of insert city here, not the hot mess. Although sometimes the hot mess makes people feel better too. But people want to see that everyone has something, Mm -hmm. that they're not alone in the struggle, right? And so if we give ourselves that opportunity to not be perfect, to have the bad pose, right? To, To show our journey, Mm-hmm. someone, one person, if one person yeah. says, oh, then I'm okay. And gives themselves some grace. Then there's a learning in that. And that's part of service, right? True and being, truly being a servant leader. You never know who you're serving because they may not say anything. No, they may not say anything. Right. No. So talk about when you think of all of this stuff, kind of that you've put together and, and writing the book and, and if, and, Again, everybody, we're going to have some information for you. So if you're looking at writing a book and you're looking at some of these things, definitely want you to reach out to Lexi. Um, What has been maybe one or two of the biggest surprises you've seen, um, other than the yogi showing up with all these 20 years old, 20 year olds, the biggest surprises you've seen as as you have really stepped into, no, this is my thing. We're going to create this safe space. Yeah. So I'll give you one in relationship to the book and one in relationship to okay. the book. So one of the really amazing things that happened with the book was I had, I had started it and I had mm-hmm. shelved it. And then COVID came and I had some people in my life go, what about that book? Mm-hmm. And at that point, there's not, I'm not traveling. There's not a lot, of, a plethora of reasons for me to say, right. well, you know. So when I picked it up, um, I reread it and I fell in love with it again. And that was magic Mm. for me because Mm -hmm. I had a story that I was crafting that I was, that I've kind of already been there done. I was bored of the content. I proved it out. Why bother? Right. Yeah. Um, And then inside of there, I realized there was a really big core wounding and a fear for my voice to be heard. And Mm. we've talked about this before. Yes. And and you know, this feeling, right? Miss radio lady. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to be more noise. And right. there's enough noise, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I will also say, or and I will also say, I am learning the value of my story being the one that someone had to hear or someone had yes. to experience, just like your stories out there for someone yeah. else to interface with. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a graceful thing to give yourself because it's really scary to write a book and put it out there. Mm-hmm. I just got like, I don't know, two days, two weeks ago, maybe I got my first two, two-star review. I thought it was, uh, you know, at first I thought when I saw that, I would like pass out, right? Right. But I didn't. I was kind of like, someone actually read it and it was okay that it wasn't their book. Like mm-hmm. people are reading it. That's the good part, yes. you know? Yes. So, so that's the one with the book. That was kind of a, a thing there. And then mm-hmm. with Ubuntu, one of the way Ubuntu unfolded, um, and you can read the story on the web, web page of Ubuntu, yeah. it was just, everything was so easy. Mm. And I'm not used to that. I'm a single mom, you know, yeah. a lot of times yeah. so I've worked really hard at working hard. There's a mm-hmm. metal that goes with that. So when yes. things got easy, I got uncomfortable. I was like, it can't be this easy. It can't be this easy. And you know yeah. what? There are points in your life where it really can be that easy if you let it. Yes. And we're the ones in the, I found that, find that we get in the way of easy. Um, so I think that's so good. You get in the way of easy. Oh, why do we do it? You know, because the more you show up in your own life and you're living a line, Mm -hmm. the path just shows itself. Yes. And just, just take it gratefully and gracefully enter onto Mm -hmm. your path and things just manifest and show up for you. I haven't won the lottery, but I have to play the lottery. (laughs) You know what I mean? So yes. Yeah. And that's so cool because you know, I, as I, as I look at what I've been building as well, you know, there's so many things we fight and, and I've, I've said this to people in recent history, because it's been, this is year four for me. Mm-hmm. And truly it's only been in this last year. Where I'm like, no, this is it. You know, I redid even my about section. I'm like, 
that other stuff was just too corporate. It was absolutely accurate. It was real. It was true, but it wasn't my voice. And so I rewrote it. And I just the other day, somebody said, oh my God, I've read your stuff. It was so what I needed to hear. It was just so real. Yeah. And there have been those times when I've thought, oh, I don't know. But when I finally started saying yes to the stuff that made sense, walking in the purpose, not knowing how, because my type A wants to know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. When I'm not walking in the how, things just start showing up and they are all aligned a little bit. Some of them are adjacent, but they mm-hmm. all have this common theme. As you said, the common threads, right? But it's that giving yourself grace to be imperfect, giving yourself the space to listen, mm-hmm. having safe spaces, right? Mm-hmm. For yourself and with others to be able to show up and that willingness to then work hard for you, because I got to tell you, we all work really hard for somebody else. Yes, we do. And part of the challenge I know that has shown up for me is, well, you know, wait, how come I'm not working 80 hours a week for me? Yeah. And it's that whole grace in the hustle. Mm-hmm. Just because you're working 80 hours doesn't mean it's good work. Not right. every dollars get dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So, so if you take those, those lessons that or those surprises that you had, Lexi, of how things kind of showed up and then what happened when you stepped into those. Mm-hmm. Along with that, what have been some of the biggest lessons that you've learned? Maybe one or two. Um, well, I have to relearn this and I think I'm going to relearn this my whole life. Yeah. I don't need to be right. Ah, uh, And um, I hung my hat on that. I mean, I, I got degrees and degrees and all the things for mm-hmm. my intellectual powers. And I had for a long time, no emotional common sense at all. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. um, I've learned that it's just not important to be right. Yeah, that's good. It's a big one. It Mm -hmm. it relieved a lot of uh, stress to have Mm -hmm. to fight. You know, I I can let you have yours and I can have mine and that's okay. And in the world we're living in right now, Mm -hmm. wow, how, how healing would that be for all of us if we could all just settle into I can have mine and you can have yours. Yeah. It can all be okay. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and that's not meaning hateful things, of course, but just we get, we get, in, we get in fights with people, um, whether or not they know it. Right. Or yes. we still Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, another, another really important thing for me is health. And I think that's part of my age. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Is that, and this is something I would say that when, you know, if someone asked me, what would you tell yourself 20 years ago? And I would yeah. say, watch what you eat and watch your health yes. because that compounding of fat on the body mm-hmm. is something that you, you get to your 50th year and you start to have yes. to unwind that. And it's just a lot harder. Mm-hmm. And you hear that. And we heard that from our elders. Now oh, we're yes. part of the elders, but I, but it's the truth. Yeah. You know? know. It is. And maybe some young people will hear it and maybe they won't, yeah. but that's a lesson that I unfortunately had to learn later in life. It's just a little harder now than it needs to be. You know? Yeah, and that then, toxicity, the toxicity uh, we put in that we yeah. eat, that we listen to, right? Mm-hmm. Just it gets in our cells. It does, and I, like I don't want—I haven't watched the news in years. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Now that it's all fake, who cares, right? But, right. <laughs> you know. So, right. I, I mean, I really curate what comes into my into my yes. my heart and space. The mm-hmm. other thing that um, I will say has been really, really good for me past few years mm-hmm. is that it's okay to have a healthy boundary in fact it's required yes and and you can set healthy boundaries with kindness and respect yeah from the other person yeah. and yourself I used to be a little bit more like a velvet hammer like I'd mm-hmm. set the boundary and be like this about it really rigid yep but I've just learned to be a little bit more in flow with it and say hey you know what that's not for me that could be for mm-hmm. you um and right. just you know let it let it go um, right. But it's been really important because it's also when you do that, one of the really cool magical things I found out mm-hmm. is you create space when you let go of what's not for you, you create space for what is for you to find you. And that's oh. magical. Yes. I I it was, I don't remember how many weeks ago it was. I was talking about this and I said, when you keep holding on to stuff, you don't make room to the stuff that's really meant for you. Yeah. Just let that other crap go. Let it go. Yeah. Let it it's go. Hard. But we get in such a habit. Yeah. 
a habit of holding on, right? We've worked so hard. We hold on to that job. We hold on to that title. We hold on to that car. We hold on to that house. We hold on to that belief system. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't allow, especially belief systems, especially about ourselves as well as others. Mm-hmm. If we hold on to that so tight, we don't allow additional information in that can help either support the belief system or tell us, hmm, there's new information. And you might want to rethink that both for your sanity and maybe for someone else's. And yet we hold on so tight because it's comfortable to hold on. Even if it's painful, it's the enemy we know. Yeah. It's the enemy we know. And I, and I'm, I'm like you, I wish, you know, what better time now than to let so much stuff go. And I think we're learning. I think we're learning through this pandemic, what is really important and what is not at least many of us. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's, should you choose it? Should it be for you? That's yes. a large gift in this pandemic for sure. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing. How do we, that, that choice, right? Cause we all have choices and yeah. what are we choosing to believe? You know, this, this, this week, you know, I, we were talking before I woke up, no sleep, you know, and even posted today. I'm like, you know, turn that bad eyeliner into a smoky eye today. Right. <laughs> like, I can't go back and re-sleep for last night, Mm -hmm. but I can change my perspective, which changes my circumstances. And I get a choice in how I show up. And, and I also get a choice to give myself some grace when I just need a minute and to be okay with that. Right. And that sometimes we're going to be cranky and we're going to be upset and we're going to be emotional or we're going to be really excited or we're just going to be done. Yeah. We're just going to be done. And you don't have to fight what there's a saying about. Just because, just because there's a fight doesn't mean you have to accept the invitation to participate, no. right? No. So use your energy to fight for stuff that makes sense, right? Yeah. And let the other stuff go. Yeah. Well, what is like a key piece of guidance? So we, that whole idea of when you're in flow, it really is easy. And if we can stop blocking the easy, right? And then being willing to, to give ourselves grace, what is a key piece of guidance you would give to someone who may be sitting here listening to this saying, man, what's coming up is not something I ever thought about before. Is that real? Is it not real? Mm-hmm. What do I do with that? Cause mm-hmm. what I'm doing now isn't working, but ooh, what is a good piece of guidance that you would give to someone? I wouldn't worry about it being real or not. Mm. I would ask this question instead. Does it bring me joy? Ah. I have found that the things that bring me ha- bring me a sense of joy, of gratitude, of love, mm-hmm. of, of happiness, mm-hmm. the vibration in that energy is so much higher that yeah. it can beat out a lot of lower vibrations like a- anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. It can mm-hmm. definitely beat out anxiety. Um, and it can beat out a lot of anger, you know, for yeah. short periods of time and burst until you process through it. Um, Mm -hmm. and the more joy you actually are intentional about in your life, yeah, there's no room for other stuff. That's what I'm saying about bringing in, being really intentional about where you spend your time with Mm -hmm. whom you spend your time, the things you read, the things you take in, um, and make sure it's all about, and I'm not Pollyanna. I know the world isn't perfect. I know that people are rioting. I know tons of people are hurting Mm -hmm. and you can bring in. The cool part about this is that when you bring in that love and joy vibration for yourself, Mm -hmm. you're also doing it for every other single person on the planet. You know, you're helping raise that vibration and collect for the collective. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be happy. Yeah. So many of us, including me, like when I see someone hurting over here, whether or not I know them, I can feel that. Yes. And so then I feel, well, who am I to be happy? Or who am I to how did I get so lucky to live in such a beautiful place or mm-hmm. all the things. And yeah. I mean, if you just sit back and just relax into that, you realize that pro- most of us have worked hard or had some huge sacrifices to get the things, not all of us, mm-hmm. but even, even, even if you aren't that person and it was all handed to you, yay for you, someone yeah. sacrificed. Right. You, right. right. So sit in gratitude of the receiving of it. Because yeah. I have found we are way better givers than we are receivers. Yes. And that's another really big yes. imbalance that I had to learn um, mm-hmm. was to be able to one, ask for help. That was, it still wasn't easy. But even when help shows up, 
like in a, yes. a red pink bow on the door. I yes. have to take a deep breath and let, let that help come in and let that love mm-hmm. come in. Because imagine if, if we're all givers and no one's receiving, that doesn't right. work. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Cause I, I, as soon as you said that, I'm like, yep. Even something simple, like, oh, you're doing so good. Or I love it. Well, no yeah. my response. I have to force myself to just say, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And just yeah. let it seep in because yeah. the habit is to negate. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm still working on it. Well, it wasn't quite what I wanted. Well, you know, just stop. Yes. And so in that, that whole idea of joy mm-hmm. and gratitude, and you started out by saying, one of your fundamental, the grounding things for you is this gratitude practice and pretty much always has been. Before we end, talk a little bit about, because we'll, we'll put this stuff in about Ubuntu and you guys got to go out there and look and see the chickens um, and just the beautiful space. Um, talk a little bit about the gratitude journals and the gratitude practice. Yeah. So as an executive coach, the biggest things we hear, right, with leaders is I don't have time. hmm and so I was like, okay, how can we not have time to be thankful? Okay, I, I'm yes. hearing you. And so yes. I used to give them a journal with, you know, 100 pages with nothing in it mm-hmm. and freaked them out. So right. I curated a gratitude journal with the intention of using it in my coaching practice. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened was a friend of mine said, hey, have you ever heard of these Facebook ads? And I'm like, no. She's like, let's just place one and see what happens. Yeah. And um, in, I think it was 33 days, a thousand of them were gone. Wow. And we just looked yeah. at each other and went, oh my, so there's something <laughs> here. And so the journal is, is it very intentionally driven. It, it's you interact in the morning and the night or mm-hmm. however, whatever cadence works for you. It's right. not dated. You fill in the dates. You can't miss a date unless you tell on yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and it really sets the tone by being really intentional in your morning and really reflective in your evening. Yeah. And there's not been anyone I've coached that hasn't done that for three to six months to now many of them, it's a lifestyle um, mm-hmm. that hasn't been able to point back to that was my gratitude practice. It yeah. just shifts perspective. Mm-hmm. And like, just think about the simple things we do when we used to go to the office, right? Mm-hmm. And we'd always sit in the same chair. Typically, we all would find a chair and around a table and sit in that chair. Yes. Well, I was yes. always the person that would sit in a chair that I shouldn't be sitting in. And I would ruffle the feathers, right? Yes. And I'd be like, that's not your chair. That's Joe's chair. And I'm like, no, I don't see Joe's name on here. I'm sitting here. Right. And eventually I just said, you guys, it's because I need to see the room from a different perspective. Like I, I want to experience you differently. And if I'm mm-hmm. sitting over here all the time, I see the same parts of your head. I don't, yes. I can't see your facial expressions and, and make up a story that you're not being nice. All the yes. things, right? And so that's what gratitude does. It's just a shift in perspective. Um, Yeah. I love that. And that changes the world. Yeah. I I just love that. And of course, because I do, because it's the the perspective. So I love the fact that gratitude shifts perspective, right? Because change your perspective, change your circumstances. You got it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Lexi, I I could be talking to you for hours, hours and hours, and we're going to have to do it again. Um, because there's some other stuff I want to go deeper on, especially around the safe spaces and all of that um, and Ubuntu. But thank you. Thank you for your time. I am sitting in gratitude, one for our friendship um, and for your unending and undying um, and unquestionable support through all of this madness because <laughs> you've been there a long time. And, and I am so appreciative that you would choose to spend some time with us at the Rutledge Perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't think of a better way to spend my time tomorrow. I really appreciate that you have been here and that you have been such an open book for everyone uh, because that, that changes lives. That changes. It's a privilege to know you, my friend. Thank you. Same here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Rutledge Perspective. Um, Again, check out the show notes. I'm going to have Lexi's bio, but more importantly, a connection to her gratitude journal. So you can start your gratitude practice if you don't have one already, a connection to her book um, and a connection to the website so you can go see what's going on at Ubuntu. I appreciate your listening and downloading and supporting the Rutledge Perspective, and we will catch you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. 
If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to the Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.